this is Lauren Ray, and I want to welcome you to the third episode of the All Wound Up podcast. If you've watched the first two episodes, thank you so much for tuning back in. And if you are a first-time viewer, thank you so much for joining me. I am able to be found on Instagram as laure.romero, L-A-U-R-A-E dot R-O-M-E-R-O, and that will be down here showing up at some point and you can also find me on Ravelry as Mistral and those are really the two best places on social media to find me. It's the day after Easter so it's Easter Monday so I'm hoping that a lot of people are off when I post this later in the day and that you're able to uh, catch it um, <clears throat> on the first day because I know I always love to be able to do that when I'm watching podcasts. Um, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is acquisitions and I don't have any yarn and I don't have any new needles what I have are a microphone and I also have some lights because in addition to being told that you guys couldn't hear me and that people were looking into buying hearing aids for themselves I was told I looked like I was sitting in a closet and I'm not I'm in my yarn room um, so I want to make sure that I look like I'm not sitting in a closet for everyone so I went out and I got some lights off Amazon. I watched a video about what people do to make their podcasts have uh, the proper kind of lighting, and I'm hoping that this really is able to help out and that the microphone, which is right here, helps everyone to be able to hear me a little bit better because I know I couldn't hear me when I watched the playback the last time and it was really upsetting. So the other thing I did um, based on people's feedback was I turned my yarn boxes on their sides so that people can see what I have. Um, so that one there is mostly DK and Sport. Those are commercial fingering and sock yarns. Those are worsted. Those, whoops, those are sweater quantities. I have bulky uh, down here behind me and then this is um, stuff that was for gift knits. So the yarn does keep on going up if you were curious. That is all of my indie dyed sock yarn up there, so um, it does keep on going. And I hung up my sock blanks because I know the green one is an Andre Sue knit sock blank, and that is gorgeous. The other one is from Clay Pearl, so it's also really pretty. But I mean, if you're going to buy an Andre Sue so knit sock blank, you should hang that thing up because it's pretty epic. But so, based on your feedback, I made it so that you could see my yarn and hopefully so that you can see me a little bit better uh, because I didn't like that you know people couldn't see me and couldn't see the yarn well uh, so you know it's all about the yarn anyway that's all my acquisitions I did not do any sort of yarn or needles or notions shopping at all over um, the last two weeks so I guess that means I'm being good I am on a yarn diet of sorts. Uh, usually when people do a yarn diet, it sounds to me more like a yarn fast. Um, people try not to buy any at all. Someone in a Facebook group that I am a member of had said that for her yarn diet this year, she's going to try to use more than she buys. So. I'm following that for my yarn diet as well. I have a ledger that I keep track of in Evernote and I make note of everything that I buy and everything that I knit so that I'm able to make sure that I'm not, you know, engaging in yarn piggery and having way, way, way too much coming into my stash while beautiful yarns are sitting here and not being used. So that's how I'm doing it and I'm keeping track. I keep less track of stuff like that gray chunky yarn over there because that's for a gift but I am still noting it in my ledger um, so that I know what I've got and I really don't let myself get out of control this year because I'm not working right now and I can't just you know buy every pretty skein as much as I would like to so that's what I'm doing to try to keep myself under control and it, it seems to be working I am thus far using more stash yarn than I've bought and I really do have a lot of stash yarn that I do quite like so there's no reason that I should feel put out to be using the beautiful stash yarn that I have so that's what I'm doing to keep myself under control and because it's on my phone I find it really easy to keep track of and when I look at somebody's shop update or when I'm in a local yarn store thus far I've really found that I've been able to have some self-control because I see 
you know what? I really, I only used five skeins of DK, or I only used five skeins of fingering. I do not need to buy 10 right now. Um, and that way I can really keep track of myself. That being said, I'll be going to the Allentown Fiber Festival next month. So that'll be on my birthday weekend and I will be um, working in the Groovy Fibers booth, but hopefully I'm able to keep my self-control somewhat there. I have made myself a list, it's on my phone in an album because I've been told that the internet connection at the venue is really rather slow considering all the vendors using Square and everything and I don't want to gum up those the works with looking up patterns on Ravelry. So I've made myself, and I know it's not the best to be showing your phone because it doesn't show up so well, I've made myself an album. So I have the pattern, this is the Effortless Cardigan by Hannah Fedig, and then if I swipe, I have the name of the pattern, the designer, the amount of yarn needed for either of the two sizes that I would consider making, and I have that for several different patterns so that I can just pull up my phone and take a look at what it is that I want so that I'm not just buying random skeins of yarn. I picked out some patterns that I've been meaning to make. So that's what I've been doing so far um, to keep myself under control. Next I'm going to talk about finished objects. Uh, so my first finished object I am wearing. This is the Starting Point by Hohi Locatelli. Took me almost a year to make, but not because it should actually take a year to make. I um, didn't knit on it consistently the whole time. It was a long-term project that kept going on timeout, and uh, you know it really shouldn't have taken so long. But I had other stuff going on at the same time, so I didn't. You know, I finished a sweater. I finished a lot of other smaller shawls. So this is my starting point, and it's my R2D2 colors. I think. Um, that is what it most looks like. There's the center, and if I come whoop, this way, you can see one of the sides, but they're identical, so one should do it. Yeah. This was an ongoing project, and it was definitely a fun project. I really like the construction. Um, you start at either end and work two pieces into the middle, and then when you join it together, it looks kind of like an hourglass. Then you knit. Um, so these two pieces get joined, this black and this black got joined together, and then these two uh, light triangles are made when you join it together. Um, so this was definitely a fun project. I did wind up playing yarn chicken quite a bit. Um, if we take a look, this is my speckled colorway that I was using, the Birch by Yarn Ink. And on this side I only had enough to do the first three rows or so and then I switched to a natural color uh, which I did use throughout the shawl but um, they blended nicely so hopefully it's not too noticeable. I know it's there because I had to do it so I'm aware but hopefully other people who look at the shawl don't see it quite as you know quite as well. Um, something that I would recommend if you do choose to make this shawl is to weave in your ends as you go. I chose to weave in my ends. There are five clues. It was originally a mystery knit along. I chose to weave in my ends after every odd number clue. So I wove in the ends after the first clue, which goes up to here, the black, I think. And then I wove in my ends after the third clue because the short, uh, the second and third clue have fewer color changes. I wove in my ends after the fourth clue just because I didn't want to be trying to join the um, two halves with pieces dangling all over the place. Um, it was already a new thing for me to be doing and sorry. It was already a new thing for me to be doing and I really didn't want to be fussing around with ends that were hanging all over the place. So that was something that I made sure to do was to really weave in the ends. Um, at the end of the fourth clue Hoagie actually has written in the pattern and come on weave in some of those ends already so I felt like I was ahead of the game because Hoagie didn't have to scold me so that was good nobody wants to get scolded by Hoagie Locatelli no she's too talented to have to worry about scolding someone like me so I was very happy that I had done that another thing that I would really recommend if you are doing 
this shawl is to keep notes for yourself. Um, make sure that if you make any changes, like I know I didn't like when my natural color lined up with my speckle color, so I made a couple of changes that um, caused it to not happen. You know, I would use the slate blue instead. Like this, I believe, was supposed to be natural into speckle. And I used the slate blue instead just to break it up a little bit. My colors were too similar. Um, make sure you keep notes. It's a lot going on in the pattern. And if you are aware of what's going on, you're going to have an easier time of things and you're not going to um, make careless mistakes. The other reason that I was able to, that I was using notes is because I put it down for such long periods of time. I wanted to make sure that I knew exactly where to pick it up. So I had careful notes about, you know, I stopped on clue two, piece one at row, you know, 10 of the twisted rib section so that I was able to really um, know exactly what I would need to do when I picked it up. So that's my starting point. It's finished. It's not been blocked. I wove in the ends and um, it's a little bit warm to be wearing it. My heat is up. Um, I decided that because the lace and the eyelets were already pretty open, I could just go ahead and skip blocking it. I may block it down the line if it gets uh, scrunched up, but even though it was in a project bag long term, the pieces weren't too wrinkled and the lace was open and it does drape really nicely. So um, I would say I didn't need to block it. If you make it, you might need to block it. It depends on your tension and gauge. So that's my first FO. I used um, two yarn ink yarns on her classic sock. I used fringe and birch. So the blue color here is fringe and then birch is the beautiful speckle. I used two cascade yarns in the heritage silk base. So I used this charcoal and I used black and they are just color names. And then my natural color here was uh, groovy hues twisted and groovin and it was an undyed base. So it was just for the natural color. I had originally bought it from Suzanne for heels, toes, and cuffs, but when I was stash diving for this shawl project, I really wanted to make sure that um, the colors all worked together and that was the best color that I had in my stash. So I just went ahead and used it. Okay, so Kelly McClure, the sock head cowl, that is my second project that I finished this week. And it is just a very tall, very slouchy cowl. It has ribbing on both sides, two by two ribbing, and then it's stockinette all the way around uh, in the middle of it. So this covers quite a bit of your neck. It is quite warm, even though it is fingering weight. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it in the winter time and maybe even in the spring and fall because it is fingering. So it is relatively lightweight in terms of an accessory. The color is Shazam by Groovy Hues Fibers and it is on a single ply base. It's on the squishy and groovin base, which is 100% superwash merino wool. So I do love this and I am definitely going to wear, um, wear it quite a lot. I know she is dying a bunch of this for um, the Allentown Fiber Festival and her trunk show at the Yarn Attic the following weekend. Uh, the dates for those will be in the down bar. Um, and it is a beautiful color. She will be dyeing it on some plied yarn this time around. I feel like it looks like a sunrise with black speckles. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think it's bright and, you know, vibrant, but the black brings it back down to earth and makes it, um, feel, I don't know, more adult to me. I love bright colors, um, but I don't wear them that often because I just feel like I need to be muted and grown up. And um, this, the black, I really think it, you know, helps out with that and that it will um, go with a lot of things. So that's, that's my second finished object. And like I said, it is warm in here, so I am going to take it off or I will roast. Um, it's April 2nd, it's the day after Easter, and winter decided not to let go. We have about five inches of snow on the ground outside. It is melting, um, but it is there. Um, so I'm, I'm in a second floor apartment and my landlady controls the heat. It is warm, <laughs> it is warm in here. So even though there's snow on the ground, I am too warm to wear a cowl in the house, so that's okay. All right, 
So, now I'll move on to whips because my only acquisitions are my lights and microphone. So, um, <clears throat> I have two that you've seen and then two that I talked about. So, I'll start with the two that you've already seen. Um, this is in a bag by Otterly Adorable Knits. Jen Frank makes them. She is on Etsy, and the shop link will be in the down bar in the show notes. It's my garden gnome bag. I believe it's the medium size. Um, so it's sock size or small accessory size. And what I have in here is I have Groovy Hues Glittery and Groovin' in the uh, I like to move it colorway. So it's inspired by the lemurs of Madagascar. Suzanne was a biological anthropology major. Um, when she did her undergrad and her, I think she has a master's in it as well. And she loves primates. So this is her lemur colorway. And what I've made out of this is actually like five shawls. Um, so here's the one that it currently is. That's the back. This is currently the dangling conversation and dangling conversation is by Mindy Ross. Um, it is sections of stockinette broken up by little eyelet bands. And this is the end of the pattern. Now I have 46 grams left out of the 100 gram skein. So that can't be the end of the pattern. That's not, I didn't use enough yarn. You were supposed to use about two thirds of the skein. I didn't even use half. So I guess my gauge was tighter. I know I went down a needle size, but I must be down a needle size and tight. I don't know. So since the last podcast, I knit all of this. There's my progress keeper way down there. Prior to becoming the dangling conversation shawl, this yarn has been through quite a lot and I'm not allowed to rip it out again. Suzanne said so. She said she's going to take it away from me. So Groovy Hughes Fibers takes back their yarn. Only when their crazy friend knits five shawls out of the same skein. So I originally wanted to make the Janna shawl. Janna is by Veronica Jo. Uh, it's a crescent, a long skinny crescent with a lace border and there's um, beads on the tip of each scallop in the lace. I planned to make that. I started it two or three years ago and didn't like how it looked. So I said, you know what, maybe I'm just not ready for beads and lace. So I had put it aside and then I started it again this year and it wasn't working. So I tried that, so that was twice. It was the, um, uh, it was that pattern that I just mentioned by Veronica Jo, Jana. So it was that twice. Then I said, all right, it doesn't wanna be this pattern. I will try another. And I said, let's not buy a second pattern for this yarn. Little did I know. I said, let's not buy a second pattern for this yarn. I decided to try the I want to knit shawl. So that was three. I didn't like that one either. It just, it, this yarn did not need to be stockinette, or sorry, did not need to be garter. Um, it looks much better in stockinette. So I ripped that out. That was the third shawl. And I said, all right. Well, maybe, maybe it wasn't that it was garter. Maybe it was because it had too much texture in it. So I tried a fourth shawl, Sailing. Not sure, again, not sure who that's by. It's in my Ravelry library if you really want to go look it up. Um, I might put it in the show notes as well, just in case somebody wants to make it. So Sailing was four. I got about this far into Sailing. Didn't like that either. So that was four. The fifth shawl I tried was Vamping. Uh, vamping is, uh, it's got sort of the shape of the find your fade. It's an asymmetrical triangle. It sort of veers off to one side, has little eyelets in it. I liked it, but I didn't like it. I couldn't really see the eyelets. Um, my tension had been off when I first started it. So that was five. And then I had restarted this after I started knitting it. So it's been six, six shawls <laughs> before it wound up being this. So I'm not allowed to rip it out again. The issue that I'm having with deciding how to move on or that I was having with deciding how to move on is because the panels get smaller and smaller and smaller until you have just one or two two garter ridges in between or two two rows of stockinette whatever it is it's four rows in between and then one row in between here I didn't want to keep going because then it would have just turned into all eyelets and I just don't think that'll work well with this yarn so what I'm going to do, it took me a while to figure it out, is where it has you increasing, 
on the first half, I'm going to decrease so that I have, I wind up with a symmetrical triangle, that this is the wide point, and then it narrows back down to this. So instead of increasing on every right side row, I'm going to decrease, and hopefully that will get me back down to here. I may rip out the last section or two so that I'm back down to 50 grams or back up to 50 grams in my ball. And I'm hoping that that will um, get me through because I really do like this. And my goal was to have it done by um, the spring shows that I'm working with Suzanne and it's just not going to be there. Um, and I would just join it, graft it so that it's together like you just saw, except I, what I love about this shawl is that the end, because it's stockinette, it does this twist and it's supposed to do that. When you block it out, it gets um, a little bit, you know, gentler because the texture changes, but I don't want to lose that by grafting it together into a cowl. So I'm going to decrease back down and it's going to be quite long, but for now it's kind of been in timeout. I just don't want to look at it anymore <laughs> after it's been six shawls and then there was an issue with this one. Mm -mm. It needs it needs a break, and I need a break from it. So hopefully that shawl and I start getting along again, and I do finish it because I've loved this yarn for years, and I don't want to lose it to Suzanne when she takes it back from me because I'm crazy and ripping it out too many times. All right, my second whip is in my Two Sticks and You project bag. Uh, it's a zip top bag this time, and this is also groovy hues fibers it is also the glittery and gro grooving base and this is um the i run on duncan colorway people go crazy for this colorway i love it i think it's absolutely you know beautiful and it looks like coffee stuff which hello i love coffee so i stopped in the middle of a row on this of course because why would i have finished a row for you but this is going to be the aq cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. And to make the AQ cowl, what you do is you knit a big flat, well, you know what? No judge, I'm ripping it out, right? And then I can just put those stitches back on the needle when I'm done to show you. I hope that uh, Amanda of the uh, Die Another Day podcast is not watching because then I know she'll have an anxiety attack and never watch my podcast again. So this is the AQ cowl. It's a bandana style cowl. And this piece here gets joined in the back so that you have a nice big long shawly type cowl that'll hang down in the front. I love that these stripes are vertical um, because of the direction that you're knitting. So the, the variegation looks like vertical stripes instead of horizontal, which is kind of cool. Um, and I love again that it looks like coffee. So this was designed to be knit with a set of minis, um, but I'm using one color. So I believe it was done before the fade craze came on and people started going nuts for fades because she has you changing colors in an interesting way because you're just doing one row of each color. All the color changes are done knit in a certain way so that you don't have that um, ridge from changing colors. But I'm just using one color so I'm ignoring those directions. Um, I pull from the outside of my balls but if you notice the inside is quite empty. I met up with a friend from yarn group that I belong to, Aisha, uh, and she's making a cozy memories blanket, so I wanted to give her a mini. And Adele of Luli Mom Yarns and Fibers was also there, and she was jealous of the mini, so I said, of course you can have a mini too. This pattern only uses about 300 something yards, and the, the ball is 400 something, so I was very comfortable with being able to pull out some yarn and make two minis for people. Um, and hopefully they find good homes in their blankets. So the AQ cowl, um, that will be done hopefully within the next two weeks so that I can wear it uh, when I go to Allentown Fiber Festival. Um, I'm not sure when I will be podcasting next because of the Fiber Festival. I'll probably do it in the middle of the week instead of, I usually try to do it on Sunday, but today, you know, yesterday was Easter. I went out to dinner with family. We had a great time. Um, but I couldn't podcast. So um, I'll probably do it in the middle of the week in between the Allentown Fiber Festival so that I can share all the stuff about that, some pictures, some you know, stuff that was going on. And then um, before the Yarn Attic Trunk Show that Groovy Hughes will be having in New Jersey. So this should be finished in two weeks so that I can wear it. 
to that trunk show, to that uh, fiber festival. Sorry. Okay. Next, I have my Matryoshka bag from Sunny Stitch Studios. It's made by Dagmar Stulich. Um, this was a special order that she did in an online group that I'm in, so that was really exciting. Um, this is the green, the celery green yarn that I showed you last week, the Debbie Bliss Pure Silk. And this is my swatch. I washed it. I pinned it out to dry. I love the drape on this, but I did not get gauge with this swatch. This was done on um, size sixes, which is what the pattern recommends. And technically, when I looked it up on Ravelry, this yarn is DK. This yarn does not look like DK, but whatever. So I tried it on sixes and that didn't work. So then I tried it on fours. I still didn't have gauge. I got the row gauge perfectly, but my stitch gauge was really off. So what I'm doing right now is I am, and I forgot to mention what needles I was using for the previous projects. I will put that down there so that you guys can see it. Sorry. What I'm doing now is I have um, a size 2.5 and I'm knitting the swatch again out of 2.5s because fours were uh, still too big. So I'm doing 2.5s. A friend of mine, Krista, she helped me out with a bunch of gauge math. It's beyond me. I should take a workshop about figuring out gauge because I shouldn't have to, you know, bother people every time I'm about to start a pattern that has to fit right and I don't have gauge. So um, this is on 2.5s. I'm going to check the gauge, finish the swatch. I have to do 36 rows. I'm on row seven. Um, so I'm going to do 36 rows. I'm going to wash it. I'm going to pin it to the blocking mat, not stretched out too much. And then I'm going to check my gauge and hopefully 2.5s or 3s, I have both, will work for this. I did pick a pattern though. This is going to be um, the 003 or 003 tank top by Veronica Job, the uh, designer who came up with the Jana shawl that I wanted to make out of the Move It yarn. Um, it is a an A-line tank top, so it flares out. It has a scalloped lace detail on the bottom, and it is quite high cut, so it should come up to about here, which I'm excited about. If I'm wearing a, um, a thin strap top, I like to make sure that it's kind of high up, otherwise I just don't feel so comfortable wearing it. Um, but it has braided straps, so that should be pretty cool. Um, I think they're done somehow with cables, but I'm not sure. I haven't gotten up to that part of the pattern. It's bottom up, and I'm pretty confident I'll be able to do it. I'm still fighting the gauge fight though. So hopefully this works because if 2.5s or 3s don't work, I'm pretty sure that the swatch will be able to stand up and walk around on its own and then it will not be a comfortable flowy tank top and I will just pick a different pattern. Um, again, I know this yarn says it's DK. It looks like fingering to me. So we'll see. But this is going to be the 003 pattern by Veronica Job, and hopefully I get a nice drape like I did on my sixes. If not, I'll just have to pick a pattern that I can, you know, get this gauge because it was beautiful. We'll see. <clears throat> so that's that, whip number three. My fourth and final whip, um, and this should be a pretty short episode because I didn't have any acquisitions to bore you all with, or, you know, inspire you all with, whichever way you want to look at it is um another another garment um this one is in a bag by laura sexton artale and it's laura artale designs she's on etsy it's my game of thrones bag um i received this i was doing a christmas swap and my partner sent me this so it has all the different house symbols from game of thrones on it um, it is quite the large bag it is tall it is wide it has that beautiful removable strap that I like so much that I'd never um, had a bag with until this, and then I got my second one with the Matryoshka bag. Um, it has this awesome stitch detailing around the top. It's on the inside and the outside. <clears throat> I think that's a pretty cool detail to include. It matches the zipper. Um, inside it has a zipping pocket that is pretty deep. It goes way down. Um, so it's got lots of room for storing of a pattern or needles or notions, whatever you need to put in. Sometimes, you know, your wallet so that you can just carry one bag when you go out. 
But this is, I started this or talking about this last week. This is um, Miss Babs. And it is the Kunlun base, so it's a blend of silk, cultivated silk, and merino. And this is my swatch. This is in a size 7. And again, I got stitch gauge, or no, I got row gauge, but not stitch gauge. Um, and I was concerned because the multi-directional cardigan, which this will be, is knit. It's an interesting construction. So you knit from cuff across the back to the cuff. You pick up stitches. You knit down the back. Then you knit the front panels. Then you do the ribbing on the bottom. Um, I was concerned about, again, gauge math. Um, my gauge was off. I was concerned. I tried going down a needle size. This is a seven. I tried going down to a six. I didn't have gauge there either. So I called a friend. Um, Krista is a mathematician and she's a, you know, a very, very talented knitter. But I happened to be chatting on Facebook with Lars Rain and I said, Lars, can I ask you a gauge question? And he broke out the calculator and opened up the copy of Vogue Knitting that this was in. And he was like, oh yeah, you can do either one, either do the six or the seven, whichever you think you'll get a better fit because you're off in the same number of stitches. He talked about, you know, how far off you're going to be based on, and I it went right over my head. But the part that I understood was that I could use either the six or the seven needle. So this is my size seven swatch and this is what I'm going with. Um, hopefully it does actually fit. If not, it'll be a nice gift for someone. So that's my swatch. And then I was all excited. I got my 12 inch chow goo needles in a size seven and I started the ribbing for the cuff and I was like, look at that cuff. Look at the great job I'm doing. I got almost three inches knit. And then because brilliant me decided to use my cell phone instead of an iPad. Oh, it's time to play HQ Trivia, everybody. I'm missing out on winning $5,000 to do a podcast. Um, it was, um, sorry, I decided to look at the pattern on my phone instead of using my iPad or printing it out. So I was all excited. I got, you know, almost done with the ribbing for the sleeves because it's knit four inches of ribbing. And then I looked closer at the pattern and realized I was supposed to be doing this on size threes. That yes, you should get gauge with the sevens for the main part of the sweater, but that the ribbing is done on threes. So I have to rip out. Thankfully, it's only the cuff. Thankfully, I didn't do more. Um, I have to rip this out and I'm waiting for a pair of 12 inch size threes to come in. Um, but then I will restart this sweater. So it will be this color, this beautiful um, variegated color, which is Joan of Arc. And that will be striped with Field Mouse, which is a tonal gray. Um, so I think they look quite nice together. So the top will be this, then the front will be gray, and the bottom back will be striped in these two colors. I'm really looking forward to um, working that sweater up because I think it's an interesting construction. I think it will be a nice challenge. And I think because it's a DK weight cardigan, I'm going to finish it um, relatively quickly. I'm not a super fast sweater knitter, but I think I'll be finishing this relatively quickly. So hopefully my size threes come in soon and I'm able to work on this a little bit more after I rip out my beautiful cuff. Uh, so that's really... Oh, and that, that is designed by Vera Valla Maki, the one who works with Hohi on the uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful magazines that she puts out once a year, or books, ebooks. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'm able to make that work out. And I didn't talk about my uh, needles that I was using with anything. I have sitting right in front of me every time I do this since the first time, so last time and this time. I have all my, you know, my social media info, and then I have this list of reminders to myself. Apparently it needs to be bigger um, than I do pre-show notes this way. Just enough that I don't have to pull up my phone and be sitting like this to tell you what the different designers are and different things. But I will put the needles down there um, when I 
upload it when I edit it and I will have all of the show notes as usual in the down bar so that you can access them easily there will be links to just about everything so that you're able to go and purchase anything that you were interested in or even just go to get more information about anything that you were interested in Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today on this cold snowy spring day Um, it was very nice to be able to talk to you all again and I hope to see you again in two weeks after the Allentown Fiber Festival. So thanks for joining me. Have a great two weeks. Bye.